So as an American moving to the United Kingdom, what things must you think about? Well, there's a lot, and this video will help you understand all of those elements. Check out this video. How can, what do we need to consider as an American that is moving from the United States over to the United Kingdom? Sal, you are probably the first person that we need to come to because we've got to talk about visas, have we not? That's correct, Simon. Um, and from my experience, it will really be um, really honing in on which is the correct visa for the purpose that an individual wants to come um, and live or settle in the UK. Um, quite often in my experience, I will um, have a client or a potential client um, who will who will have been told about a particular visa category or read about it, and it would transpire that by the time that my advice is finished, um, that it was actually a different type of visa that was more applicable um, for, for for their purpose than the one that we started the discussion with. Um, it doesn't help that the UK Home Office website is awfully confusing um, and not and not a very good read with different links and things of that sort. Um, so I'd really say be clear about the correct visa category um, to ensure that you're going to be able to carry out the purpose that you intend to do so. And from a, a someone that's moving from uh, the US over to the UK, obviously they'll be disposing of assets that so they need to think about tax, which Greenback's uh, expert tax services can certainly help with. But think about coming to the UK now, uh, they're going to need to get a house. Uh, Simon, Hodgson, uh, over to you in terms of getting a mortgage. So someone who's an American moving over to the UK, how, what's the process of getting a UK mortgage and can they get a mortgage? Okay, um, certainly from an investment perspective, um, that can be done. The number one thing we'll need to do really is get a bank account open so that we can start creating some kind of credit um, profile and a UK address to, to base themselves from, to domicile from. Whether that, you know, it, it can be if they haven't really moved across, it might be they've got friends or relatives in the UK who are happy to use their postal address. That can be a good start so that it, it kind of starts the credit process before they've moved across. Um, definitely great if we can do that beforehand because it, it helps massively. Um, potentially, if you've got Amex, you can transfer, as I understand it, your Amex registration also into UK to start the credit profile coming up from, from there. That, that can, although not massively successfully, can cross-pollinate your, your credit profile from the US to the UK. Um, so definitely worthwhile on there. Residential stuff, um, really going to come down to proof of income. So that can be really quite difficult first time out. Um, and we would need to put them in, in you know, get some expert individual advice at that point in order to work out how to make that happen. Very good points. Uh, John, just a, a flavour of pensions. I mean, if you've got pensions in, in with the States, how easy is it to port it over to the United Kingdom? Uh, well, you can't. They're different tax regimes um, and, and pensions taxation is treated differently. So um, one of the biggest problems, uh, and it works both ways, is if a UK moves to the US or a US citizen moves to the UK, uh, it is typically that the company that you were dealing with in the US before you move uh, won't really want to deal with you after you've moved. Uh, it, it's, it's just very, very difficult to find <clears throat> companies to work with that will uh, uh, continue to work with you once you've left the country uh, and advisors, it's exact, exactly the same, like 99.9% .9 of UK-based financial advisors cannot advise a US resident. And that works in reverse. Most, you can't find an advisor at Edward Jones or wherever in the US that will continue to work with you and advise you uh, when you are in the UK. So it's important that you look at your arrangements before you leave so that you're getting them set up in a structure and, and with companies, because there are companies out there um, in both in the US and the UK that will continue to work with you, that will work with expat advisors. Um, and uh, that, you know, that, that makes the whole process easier. 
Um, the alternative to that is leaving the money where it is and being ostracized, basically, <laughs> um, and not being able to speak to your advisors that you have worked with about things like asset allocation, um, you know, where you want to uh, uh, um, invest your money. Um, uh, uh, distributions become a little bit more difficult, a bit more tricky to handle. Uh, you know, all of those kind of things need to be taken into account. But it's, it's a bit like the mortgages. You need to consider it before you make the move. Chenji, you have experience of moving different countries and in particular moving to the UK. What kind of things have we missed off of what we've already talked about? Uh, I think, you know, we, we're all getting a bit really technical. First of all, I think one thing in particular, uh, which blew my mind uh, when I came to the UK was there is Costco. <laughs> <laughs> so well, the first thing I've done, I got myself a Costco membership. Um, and no, but you know, that, apart, apart from that, I think uh, it, you know, pensions, as John uh, John Edgar you know mentioned, it's it's a very it's a touchy subject because oftentimes, for example, I deal with ex- uh, executives uh, American companies who are stationed in the UK. Oftentimes, they have married uh, with a Amer- with a British citizen and settled the family here. So, and they ask me, what do I do with my you know, US pension? And there's usually like you know, a lack of advice on that. So then basically, you know, there's nothing much anyone in the UK can do anything about your US pension. What we can do is also what, look at your UK pension while knowing what's happening on the US side of things. And the thing is, you need to tell me what your long-term goals are, because obviously some people will decide to go back to the US, in which case there might be UK taxes due. And if they want to stay here forever, if they want to take money from the US pension, then they will they might get taxed in the UK. So these are the topics that you know we need to consult with cross-border tax advisors. You know, for example, Simon, um, and also you know John as well, who's based in the US, and you know I'm based in the UK. Basically, you have a power team working behind you to solve from both sides of the pond. And, you know, most specifically, you know, many people do make a mistake. I've made that mistake myself. I think, you know, in America, it's, it's, it's oftentimes we invest in mutual funds, right? It's part of our investment portfolio. And, you know, and when you come to the US, you open up maybe H- H- uh, HSBC bank account and invest in one of their mutual funds. But that's one of the biggest mistakes you can make in terms of tax wise, because mutual funds in the UK are considered what's mostly uh, uh, mutual funds are considered as passive foreign investment companies. And these have very, very um, well, let's just say horrific tax penalties uh, that are taxed by the IRS. And in terms of, you know, I'm sure someone will touch on this subject as well. When you do buy a house, right. And when you're living here for a bit and you want to pay a down payment using uh, using savings or you know, income from the US, there's also there might be tax due when you buy when you purchase a home. So there's a lot of things and which I you know uh, speak speak to a professional about this. You know everything you can talk about because you've got two of the most powerful enforcement agencies in the world, right? That's always watching you. So always be careful. One's called the RRS and the other is called Her Majesty's Revenue HMRC. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just to touch on that, there's a couple of things that, uh, from a tax perspective, you have to still, as an American moving to the UK, you will still need to, unless you renounce your citizenship, you will still have to do 1040 tax returns. You may have to, because if you have savings in the U- in the UK, more than $10,000, you also have to do an FBAR, uh, which you, are heavy, heavy penalties for not filing that document, so over $10,000. Uh, you know, it, it, investments has to file that F bar. Um, if you're good to be in the UK, if you're an employee in the UK, depending on the type of visa you come over, then there may not be a tax consequence unless you earn over hundred thousand pounds. If you're good to be self-employed or you have any type of property investments, then you will ha- either it starts to think about well, do I own those assets in my own name, which you then have to do a self-assessment tax return, or you might have to think about, well, do I need a limited company structure? Um, And for Americans listening in, what do I mean by that? Well, in America, you've got LLCs, which is similar to partnerships in the UK. You have S Corps, which are kind of really still the same as uh, partnerships, really, because they're opaque and go through. Uh, And then you have C Corporations, which is traditionally speaking, the same as limited companies in the UK. So you do need to think about these tax consequences as well. 
Um, the one final point I was going to say that Natalie Hayden Young, who can't be with us today from Geldards, would always say and agree with me that if you have a will in the United States, you need a will in the United Kingdom because those wills will only work in the countries that they are written. They don't have any transatlantic jurisdiction, so therefore you have to write your wills and we call those mirror wills. So do bear that in mind. But I think in terms of a, a question of how, you know, what considerations you might have for as an American movie to UK, I think we've given you a good flavor, but always reach out to the panel members to uh, get further details of what you must consider. There are many live events that you can register for free. There are four events that's showing HK to UK to help people move from Hong Kong to the UK, the property expert panel, if you're a property investor and property developer, this will be very useful for you. Tax Q&A, if you want to ask proactive tax questions in regards to structures and how to mitigate tax in the future. And finally, UK tax return Q&A, as it says, to deal with questions in relation to your tax returns before you submit it to HMRC. Don't forget that these events are live and will be shown on YouTube the day after. So why not register today, start saving tax tomorrow.